There had been an interest in trying to come up with a calcium source that could be compatible with fluoride in a simple water-based formulation, for instance. Uh, competitors and just existing scientists in this field have been, tr have been trying to do this, but they always had to segregate calcium from fluoride. And so one of the things that I took notice of if I was going to be into this space, and I got into this space because of my own dental problems, so that kind of helped get me into this, um, was to try to figure out, well, we need to be able to separate calcium and fluoride, but we want to be able to do that as economically as possible and have it work quite well, even better than what was going on already with existing technologies. So really, it was a matter of trying to find the right calcium phosphate system or, or mineral phase that had opportunities that you could modify it perhaps and then modifying it you could then try to control the solubility and therefore how it would react with fluoride if it was going to react with fluoride um, only whenever it's delivered to the tooth you know but remain stable in a formulation. With the fluoride varnish the fluoride's doing the bulk of the work Right, so you have 22,500 ppm of fluoride that are uh, generally released from the varnish. Some varnishes maybe have a little bit less than that. But the bulk of the action is don't mess up fluoride. And so we're very happy with the ClinPro varnish that has the TCP because the TCP doesn't interrupt any of the fluoride action at all. But yet it still delivers that calcium that can strengthen that tooth and by developing enamel-like mineral to have all those aesthetic qualities. It's gonna do that two ways, right? One way, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, is that we're not depositing gobs and massive amounts of calcium onto the tooth. If you do that, there's going to be a tendency for tartar to form or some other kind of uh, somewhat insoluble uh, mineral phase that will then have to be scraped up by, by the dental cl clinician because acids and stuff just aren't enough to remove that. So, first of all, you'll be reducing the amount of tartar that you have on, your, on the tooth that will naturally make your teeth look brighter. The second part is you're de delivering a certain amount of calcium to the tooth and it's limited and it's limited on purpose because then you're, you're able to get uh, higher quality calcium phosphate mineral that forms. It's going to appear more crystalline and more crystalline substances naturally reflect light better than those substances that are not so crystalline. So you're going to get a perceived uh, whitening benefit just from the calcium doing its job to strengthen it and in a manner that doesn't, you know, create tartar-like uh, substances onto the tooth. Fluoride has been around in an effective toothpaste since the 1950s, and so effectively it's over, you know, 60 years old, and we're still having dental decay rampant in the world. In fact, dental decay rates are going up. I think that instead of having uh, some kind of of, of miracle formulation, I think that the, that the next innovations are going to come from an educated patient base or uh, clinicians, uh, be them doctors, um, hygienists, assistants, and so on, that actually try to educate their, their, their patients about the different choices that are available to them in terms of certain dental products as well as uh, certain lifestyles and how that fits with their risk profile. So I think that it's going to be a combination of knowledge. I mean, we, we are living in the information age. Now is the time that we can start to take uh, easier ownership of our own health. We can have access to the internet. We can, you know, doctors are going to be um, hopefully more available and wanting to talk about that. So that to me is going to be the main innovation.